Okay, great. Well, thanks everyone for coming tonight. Um, can everyone hear me okay in the back? Okay, excellent. So, uh, yes, yeah, so we're going to look at how to transform your website into a lead generation engine. Um, you know, oftentimes websites are, are built because, you know, they're, they're outdated and you need a refresh or, you know, someone thinks that, that it needs to look more modern. Um, and what, what we really want to focus on tonight is getting results out of your website, getting business results out of your website, and specifically looking at how do you drive more leads from your website. And so um, everything that we're going to touch on tonight is going to be looking at what you can do on your site. Um, and so this is not a session where we're going to be looking at strategies to drive traffic necessarily to your, to your site outside one section. Um, it's mostly when you... Uh, when you're driving them to your website, how can you then convert them into a lead for your business? And we'll be going through a lot of different strategies. Uh, so uh, bear with me, I'm gonna talk very fast. <laughs> um, but uh, one of the things that, that I want you to be aware of is, you know, yes, you need to be doing a lot of these strategies, but you don't need to be doing all of them. Sometimes you can hit upon one and lightning can strike. One of the strategies that I'm gonna point out tonight helped us increase our email opt-ins to, to, uh, to our database uh, by 300%. And so some of these can be very, very effective, but you have to just test and test for your own website and see what works. Some of these may work great for your business, some may not, um, and that's okay. So a little bit uh, of background on myself. So as mentioned, I'm Tom Shapiro. I'm the CEO of Stratabee, which is an agency uh, just north of Boston in Burlington. We're a B2B branding web design and marketing agency. Uh, I wrote a book called Rethink Your Marketing, uh, and I'll be coming out with a new book uh, called Rethink Lead Generation very shortly. Um, at my last agency, I was uh, director of digital strategy and helped the company go from 85 employees to over 700 in five years. Uh, so a lot of what I'll be talking uh, about tonight uh, comes from uh, those experiences. And through my career, I've worked with everyone from startups to mid-sized companies, which is what we focus on now. Uh, last agency I was at, we focused on the Fortune 500. So worked with AT&T, 10 different brands at Procter & Gamble, Hewlett Packard, um, a lot of companies like that. So I'm going to bring all of that experience to bear this evening, and hopefully uh, you'll find that very helpful. All right, so let's dive in. So how can we transform your website into not just a bunch of pages? right? But we want to build a platform, an engine that drives as many leads for your business as possible. And the first place that I always, 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 always start is with the audience. Why? Because they're the ones who are going to become the leads. We have to start with them. The more that you understand your audience, the more that you can focus on your audience and align with them, the easier all the other strategies, the easier all the other tactics become. If you leapfrog and you start just doing A-B testing, for example, without going through this process of audience alignment, you will not maximize your lead generation. You, you, you just won't. Um, and so what I would urge you to do is start by looking at audience segmentation. So what are the different audience segments that, that you need to be targeting? Uh, and if you have not defined these audience segments in a crystal clear way, that's the first place that you can start. Very actionable item to put on your to-do list for tomorrow. Define your audience segments. Um, so by defining audience segments, you're able to communicate more directly and engage more deeply with each of your site visitors. Why? Because you're speaking to them specifically. So for example, the software company Domo, how do they do this? They have their audience self-segment themselves. And so uh, they provide business intelligence and dashboarding software, right? So if you're a CEO, the information that you're going to want, the solutions that you're going to want from them are very, very different than if you're in operations or finance or service or um, marketing. And so depending on who you are, you're going to have a very different experience on their website. And it's completely aligned to who you are as the audience. And then once you have clarified your audience segments, you want to look more individually at each person who's within those segments. So you want to go beyond the who to understand the why. Why are they coming to your site? And understand you know, what are the challenges that they have and what are, what are the objectives that they're trying to achieve. And you build personas. And, and you should build personas for each 
audience type within each audience segment. Okay, so you might have three different personas in one segment, you might only have one persona in another segment, but you want to be building these personas per segment. And then, a lot of the, the advice that you get on building personas is just dead wrong. Um, so a lot, of, um, a lot of the advice that you'll get is you need to, to make your personas as detailed as possible. You need to know, oh, you know, is the person 35 years old or 37 years old or 40 years old? It doesn't matter. It really doesn't. Does the person have a dog? Do they have a cat? What's the dog's name? Where do they shop at? That stuff doesn't matter. So, so like I said, we're a B2B agency. If you're looking at selling to businesses, all you need to, to focus on, and you'll see at least 50% of your persona should be focused on objectives and problems. So what are their objectives, what are their goals, and then what are the problems that they're trying to solve? If you can figure those things out, then your personas can be very, very effective. Why? Because it's, it's so actionable. Everything in the persona then becomes very, very actionable. So again, make sure that at least 50% of your personas are focused on goals and problems of your target audience. And then, let's say that you've defined your audience segments, and within those audience segments, you've defined your personas. Then what you have to ask yourself is, what's the ideal site experience per persona, right? They come to your site, what do you want them to do? Have you defined that, or do you even know? And what we find is a lot of companies can't even articulate it. They, they don't know what they want them to do next. And so, have it very crystal clear in your mind what you want each persona in each audience segment to do once they land on your site in order for them to achieve their objectives and solve their problems. Now, the Russian psychologist, Alfred Yarbus, ran some really interesting studies where he showed a group of people, one by one by one, the same painting. And before he would reveal the painting to an individual, he would ask them each a unique question. And depending on the question that he asked, they consumed the painting completely differently. So for example, if he asked how old are the people in the painting, and then he showed the painting, they would look at their faces, and they would not look anywhere else. They would only look at their faces. And if he said, what's their status in society? They would look at their clothing, they would look at the furniture, and would not look at their faces. Same painting, right? Completely different experiences, completely different data consumption patterns. And so, you have to think, okay, your site visitors are different, right? They're different personas in different audience segments. They come to your website. What are the questions running through their minds as they hit your site? And depending on those questions, they might be consuming your website in very, very different ways. And we think in terms of questions, right? You go through your day asking questions and answering questions in your mind. That's how we think. And so if you can't articulate the very specific questions that your site visitors have, as they land on your site, it's going to be very difficult to have a high performance website. So just make sure you're going through that process of figuring out what are those questions that they have right when they land on your site. And, and then it makes it so much easier, all the different strategies, all the different tactics that you do for lead generation then become all the more easier. Okay, so how many of you are using IP detection to understand who is visiting your website. One, two, so maybe two in the entire room. Okay, another action item for you. Go out tomorrow and purchase IP detection software. It is highly effective, it's amazingly useful for lead generation, and you know, I, I speak at conferences around the country and it, it always amazes me how many companies and how many people are not using IP detection to know who is on your website. It is the very first thing that I do every single morning. Every morning, I check our IP detection software to see exactly who was on our website the day prior. So what does it look like? So IP detection software, and you know, there, there are many different packages on the market. Um, this is Lead Feeder, this is what we use now. Um, there's also a package called Lead Forensics, uh, which we used for years. It's fantastic, very, very powerful. Uh, Whoisvisiting.com. There, there are many, many different uh, applications for this. Um, and then if you use uh, a marketing automation tool like HubSpot, that comes in included, although it's not as powerful as the standalone IP detection software packages. So I would say if you want to maximize all the data that you can get out of IP detection, get a standalone package. It, it's it pays for itself very quickly. 
And so what it does is it, it will identify exactly who is on your website and by, by company. And then if you tie your CRM into it, you can also see the individuals on your website as well. So how many of you are using Google Analytics or something similar? Pretty much almost everyone, right? About 90% of the room. So Google Analytics will tell you how many people visited a page, right? Won't tell you who they are, right? And it will tell you, you can get some navigational paths through it, but it won't tell you well, which company was, go, was going through a certain navigational path. It will just give you the aggregate data. Well, that's not very actionable. You can't really do much with that. So IB, IP detection software changes all of that. It enables you to see, oh, okay, IBM was on my website yesterday, and there were three different people from IBM on my website, and this is how each of them navigated through my site. And so it will give you, it will give you a page by page by page <coughs> navigational path for that particular user. So again, very different from Google Analytics where you're getting aggregate data. This is for that individual company. And again, if you tie your CRM system into it, you can uh, also uncover individuals as well. And then what can you do with this? So this is all one user who kept coming back to the Stratabeat website over and over and over again in July and the beginning part of August, right? So in this way, we can figure out exactly what that person is interested in, right? And in this, in this particular visit right here, we see, oh, okay, so they spent three and a half minutes reading a blog post about account-based marketing. And they also uh, spent almost four minutes on a blog post about behavioral intelligence. This enables us to do outreach to them Right? If they're not filling out a form, if we're not capturing their email while they're on our site, we can go after them off-site. Right? We can email them and say and and talk about ABM, talk about behavioral intelligence, talk about whatever they are specifically interested in and not talk about what they're not interested in. It helps you it helps you transform your website from strictly relying on on-site conversions to also being able to translate it into offsite conversions. It's very powerful. So oftentimes we'll have companies that will not fill out a form on our website. I mean, there are a lot of people who do not fill out forms. They just don't, it's not their personality type. And if you're thinking, oh, well, I'm just going to increase my online conversion rate. Well, that's great. But I mean, if you have a 10% conversion rate on your website, you're crushing it already. But what about the other 90% of your site visitors, right? You have 90% of your site visitors. You have no idea who they are. And that's with an awesome conversion rate, right? Mm -hmm. Get IP detection software. You'll love it. You will love it. And I, I guarantee if you look at it every day and you use it and you do outreach based on it, it's customized outreach, you'll get leads. All right. So now let's take a step back and look at a bit of neuroscientific principles and human psychology that, that will really help you drive leads. So this is more foundational uh, before we get into things like calls to action and forms and uh, uh, things like that. And again, what we want to do is look at this holistically, lay down the foundation so that no matter what tactics we do, they're very, very effective. And so this, this <coughs> plays into that background, this foundation uh, of what you'll be doing. So what we want to do is understand how our brains work. So your site visitors are just like you and me. We all have the same human brain, right? And the thing is, we all operate as subconscious creatures. Well, the vast majority of what's going on in our minds is subconscious. So our brains process 11 million bits of sensory information every single second, 11 million bits. The part that you're aware of are conscious brains, 40 to 50 bits per second. So 11 million bits per, uh, uh, compared to 40 to 50 bits per second. We are creatures of the subconscious. And unless you're marketing on a subconscious level to your site visitors, again, I don't care what A-B testing you're doing, I don't care what CTAs you have, you are not going to maximize your conversions. You're not gonna maximize your lead generation. <laughs> Gerald Zaltman, a professor at uh, Harvard Business School, says that 95% of purchase decisions are based on the subconscious. We make decisions based on the subconscious, then we rationalize them. So we have to make sure that our websites 
are speaking at a subconscious level, are connecting at a subconscious level, are engaging on a subconscious level. And so you're probably thinking, okay, this sounds great, how? All right, so let's talk about how. One of the most powerful ways that you can do it is through emotional marketing. So the neuroscientist Antonio Damasio ran some really interesting studies where he looked at people who had damage to the part of the brain that triggers emotions. In other words, these people could not feel any emotion. They're fully functioning adults. If you ran into them, if you talked to them, you'd never know that something was wrong. Um, but they could not feel angry. They couldn't feel sad. They couldn't feel happy. They couldn't, they couldn't feel. Uh, and what he found was these people had an extremely, extremely difficult time making any decision, including purchase decisions. In other words, without emotion, we can't make purchase decisions. <laughs> Purchase decisions are necessarily based on emotions, and then we rationalize them afterwards. And so we feel like we're in full control. We feel like we're in full control of where we click, what we buy, all of that. A lot of it is websites are guiding us towards what they want us to do. Marketing is guiding us towards what the company wants us to do. So let me give you a specific example. So uh, this is a company where, okay, you go to their website and you can see right at the top of their, their homepage, they provide management solutions for associations. Sounds good, right? This is what we call dictionary marketing. What do we do? We do management solutions. That's what we do for associations. Does it move you emotionally? No, not at all. It does not trigger any emotions. This is just... Uh, as if you picked up a dictionary, as if you picked up an encyclopedia, it doesn't move you at all. And so it's very difficult to drive people to action if you're messaging them with dictionary marketing. Now, a company in the same industry that does the same exact thing, this is what we did for their website. Make your mark on the world. Reimagine what's possible. Virtual strategic management consulting and execution ignites your organization's growth, achieve more with virtual, and then the next layer down, we get into the audience segmentation where they can self-segment. It's a completely different paradigm of how to build a website. Our whole objective here is to start triggering those emotions, right? We want them feeling emotions because that puts them in the state to engage. It puts them in the state to fill out forms, to sign up, to, um, uh, to attend webinars, whatever actions you want them to take. It primes them.